Hello and today I want to introduce the notion of the UK Constitution. Now this is not just important for say a student of public law but any law student or anybody because all the other laws are kind of dictated and you know they work on the presumption that we have a working constitution a constitution that functions that's not in crisis so that's why it's really important now before we can look at what exactly is the UK constitution we kind of have to go through what is a constitution in the first place so how shall we explain what is a constitution well my favorite definition thus far I've found um, originates in the working definition provided by the House of Lords uh, Constitution Committee. It's the first report, 2001-2002, is available on the website. And if you go in uh, on that report, and if you go to Chapter 2, you'll see Paragraph 20, um, the working definition. So this is after all the politicians give their different definitions. This is what the um, select committee uh, chooses to be their working definition. And it's a beautiful definition, and I'm going to read it out very slowly. So they say, the constitution is <coughs> the set of laws, rules, and practices that create basic institutions of the state and its component and related parts and stipulate the powers of those institutions and also the relationship between different institutions and between those institutions and the individual. So it covers everything from the creation of these institutions, for example, like Parliament, to, you know, um, how what are the powers that, say, Parliament or the judiciary have, and also mentioning not only how does the state interact internally within itself but how the state interacts with individuals that is exactly what a constitution is now if we turn to the US for a minute all of that like information um, is found in one document called the US Constitution and you can read it it says article 1 that there will be a house of representatives doing this article 2 they will be doing this article 3 judges do this da, 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 da. I haven't read it but uh, I, I've just briefly skimmed over it, and that's how it's format. Now, in the UK, our constitution, we don't have a book which we can turn to, so it's more complex. And before moving on to how I would like to explain to you what a UK constitution is, um, I just want to point out that loads of textbooks, and it's not the in-depth one, it's the nutshell ones, and they tend to just spend ages trying to categorise the UK constitution. So they say, like, um, it's unwritten or uncodified. And I think that this is basically a time-wasting exercise. And it's also inaccurate. It's time-wasting because it doesn't help us in any way. Uh, if we want to progress this is why the house of lords had to come up with a different a definition which doesn't talk about it being uncodified anything it just explains what exactly is um, a constitutional matter what is a constitution we can work with it just saying it's unwritten doesn't help us in any way and it's also inaccurate because by saying it's unwritten, it implies that all of the UK's const constitution, so the laws which govern, for example, how the state interacts with the individual, are all like, I don't know, they're just unwritten, they're not written down anyway, which is a lie because we have things like legislation, like the Union of Scotland Act, which will tell us how, um, you know, Scotland is to interact with um, uh, the UK as a whole, things like that. So. I would really not waste time with that and I don't think I'm going to be doing a video on that because I think it's a time wasting exercise. So how would I go about understanding the UK constitution if we're not to generalise it with such attributes? Well I would say understand the sources of it and by sources I mean where we can find the information on um, the UK constitution. So where we can find information about how much power does parliament have? How does power, a parliament interact with individuals? And I've set out, um, sorry, I've set out six sources um, that we can look at um, to understand how exactly uh, the UK constitution works. So the first source 
um, is the Cabinet Manual 2011. It's a relatively new document and essentially what it is, is a document which describes the current uh, laws and status of the UK Constitution. So what is happening? Now it doesn't have any lawmaking capacity. So just because something is written there doesn't become law and actually doesn't even have any authority. It's mainly there to make the constitution more accessible and more transparent so that we can look at this cabinet manual and explain like oh ministers are to do x y z and this will explain us exactly how the uk constitution works so it's useful but do note that in its power and authority you know it's not so much but the exercise we're trying to do is understand the UK constitution and to understand in the UK how what are the main laws of the land like how does it work operationally speaking we can turn to source number one which is the cabinet manual of 2011. The second source is as I mentioned before legislation and statutes we have tons of it in the UK this is why it's inaccurate to say that we have an unwritten constitution because for example the rights of individuals we can be explaining that from the bill of rights even that magna carta has stuff on this so we have tons of statutes and legislation which are constitutional then the third is judicial decisions now remember we're a common law um, legal system and the thing is usually like we're taught as law students that always legislation takes precedence uh, you know where we have a previous court decision and a new legislation we will follow the legislation but things aren't as simple as that and in my opinion all law is judge-made law because even for us to follow the legislation and statute we rely on statutory interpretation and and you know actually law bodies to enforce it so um, judges jury etc uh, <coughs> the second way in which judges make law is not just statutory interpretation but also um, uh, through precedent they follow previous um, judges understanding so when we're looking at the UK Constitution to understand you know rights of individual how what are the limitations for example of powers of Parliament or the monarchy we can turn to judicial decisions because there will be cases on this then the next one is constitutional conventions. Now these are extremely uh, important in the UK because we don't have this one book or one document we can turn to like we can in the US. Now these are not binding in law, they're just political rules. But at the same time they are binding even though they're not legally binding. So I hope you get the distinction. And as it, as you'll see in the cabinet, this is a quote from the cabinet manual, they are rules of constitutional practice that are regarded as binding in operation but not in law and examples include the prime minister sitting in the house of commons or that for bills to become law we need a royal assent and approval from the queen so stuff like this is really important if it's not fulfilled or not in action you know it would undermine our whole legal system yet it's not written anywhere it's not you know nowhere it's not written anywhere it's not in any precedent it just it is what it is and it's a convention basically and we can do more videos on this like how Sir Ivor Jen uh, Jennings goes on like how can we identify what are the constitutional convention but we must turn to this when we're trying to understand the UK um, constitution i.e. what are the main laws of the UK um, uh, legal system like how does it work the powers the rights of individuals rights of state and I know I said there were six sources but the last one uh, the last two I basically put into one which is EU law and international law because like international law for example UN treaties and EU law like the European Convention on Human Rights they have uh, very much a presence in the UK system and the EU law particularly is binding over even domestic law especially where the human rights are concerned we have to be in accordance with them and so when we're looking at the UK constitution we should turn to these international sources because they will also give us um, an idea of um, you know how the UK works uh, how the UK constitution works now this is a very long video so I'm keen to stop it right here I hope this helps you to grasp a bit more understanding of the UK constitution um, and you guys stay away from trying to label it with unwritten uncodified it's really not on thank you for watching